Thank you very much, President. I would like to begin by thanking my colleague, Richard Lyle, for securing this debate and thanking him for what was an excellent speech. I also want to uh, put on record my deep appreciation for the remarks that um, Adam Tompkins made, which I thought was an absolutely superb speech, one of the finest I have heard since being elected to this place. I, I think that the points that have been touched on by both Richard Lyle and Adam Tompkins get to that central question that we still ask ourselves is how? How could this happen? And I think that the diagnosis made by Hannah Arendt in the early 1960s as she covered the Aikman trial <laughs> effectively summarised by Leonard Cohen in his poem remains the most pertinent the venality the quote from Prima Levy uh, wie viel Stück that word Stück peace hatred perhaps is not a positive but an absence of empathy I think one of the most chilling facts of the Holocaust, I find, is the decision to use carbon monoxide and Zyklon B gas in the extermination. In the early phase of the killings in the occupied territories of the East as the Wehrmacht advanced SS Einsatzgruppens would follow up behind special commands and they would kill shooting massacres like Babi Yar in Ukraine. But it was determined that using gas would be more humane, not for the victims, but for the perpetrators. And this, of course, became possible. It was a, a methodology that was seized upon because preceding the systematic attempt to eliminate the Jewish population of Europe, the German government had been using gas, carbon monoxide, to eliminate the disabled and the infirm. And a point that Richard Lyle made at the very start of his speech is with regards to when did this start, 30th of January. I'm currently reading one of the, I think, great pieces of literature to emerge from the Holocaust, and that's the diaries of Victor Klemperer, who was a professor of philology and romance languages in Dresden. And he meticulously noted, amongst observations in his own life and many of the prosaic goings-on that characterised any life of any middle-class German professor, the slow stranglehold and asphyxiation of liberty and civil rights and status that took place, the marginalisation. And while we rightly focus our attention on the events towards the end, in the extermination camps. And that is rightfully what is preeminent in our memories. There was a process of psychological torture that preceded that. It's a difficult thing, I think, for anyone to try and contemplate what that must have been like to say that I am a German and to be told, no, you're not. And that lesson that we have spoken about so far of hate and of allowing hate to be tolerated or to be acceptable or to be seen as something that can be permitted in moderation is a great folly. Because, as both Richard Lyle and Adam Tompkins have said it, the greatest mistake we can make is to look upon Nazis and the crimes they committed as the acts of monsters. They were cool, clinical and rational. And I think that perhaps... The most chilling, chilling story I have, very difficult, I think the most chilling example of how this was captured was during the extermination of the Hungarian Jews. They were, they were carrying out these murders at such a scale that the crematoria at Auschwitz could not cope. So cremation pits were dug. And a testimony of a surviving Sonder commando, the Jews who were forced to work in the gas chambers in the crematorium. They were two Hungarian sisters and their friend. And they knew what was going to happen. And they said to an SS guard, I 
would like it if we could die together. So can you shoot us together? And the SS guard lined the three of them up, laughing and chuckling and saying they would be happy to oblige. And he shot, and the bullet went through one, two, and the three of them collapsed. And their bodies were then thrown into a cremation pit. And the screaming began because one of them hadn't been shot. And the SS guards laughed, thought this was hilarious. So I think to know that that happened within living memory in one of the most advanced civilizations in the world is a lesson for us all. That is what human beings are capable of. This was not some aberration. This was an end of a, a very cold, clinical, and for them, logical process. So we must remember that. And I agree entirely with Adam Tompkins. Whatever differences we have in this place, whatever differences we have politically, anger, yes, passion, yes, but never, ever hate.